Hello, my name is Richard Coffin and you're watching The Plain Bagel. We are doing another question and answer video and it is a beautiful spring day. I forced Noah to stay inside with me and film. Noah, say hi to the camera. Hi, camera. Before we get into the video, I wanted to kind of explain why I reposted the interest rate video. You might have noticed uh, that I changed the animation in the first part with the second video. I was trying to oversimplify a pretty complex topic about policy rates and I talked about the central banks being the ones that give the loans. Uh, even though there are central, the central banks do give loans to banks, they don't necessarily use the policy rates. They tend to have a rate that's derived from that. Uh, so I wanted to clarify that and that's why I reposted the video. Uh, so for perfect transparency, uh, that's been updated now. So today we are taking questions from the YouTube comment section and from Reddit and as normal, we answer them. Uh, we take things a bit more casually and if you have questions in the future, leave a comment down below and we'll do our best to get to them at the next video. So without further ado, first question. Thomas Vogelsinger asks, can you explain why QE has boosted stock market prices? Okay, so that's actually kind of related to the interest rate stuff. So for those who don't know, QE stands for quantitative easing. And that's basically when a central bank will create money. Uh, it's not through printing money like you might expect. It's kind of in the same way that you have an online balance to a bank account. Uh, the central banks will increase their own account balance and then buy financial instruments from commercial banks. What this does to the economy is one is it lowers interest rates. Uh, it makes government bonds less attractive. And what that will do is it will encourage people to put their money into more risky investments like stocks uh, and corporate bonds. And that will boost the stock market because naturally there's more demand for stocks. Aside from that, it also kind of just stimulates the economy. Uh, and that's because obviously now there's more money in the economy. If it moves hands faster, that will increase actual activity. Uh, but the important thing to note is that not everything's uh, fine and dandy when you do quantitative easing because of inflation. If it goes on for too long or if it you know, creates too much money, then prices will start to go up to adjust to the new money supply. And that's obviously not a good thing for people who have their money in a bank account. What's a PE ratio and how is it used in making investment decisions? The PE ratio stands for price to earnings per share. And it basically means how expensive a stock is. It's basically how much you're paying per dollar of profit from that company. So because they measure how expensive a stock is, a lot of analysts will use them when doing research. Uh, they'll look at the how the PE ratio has changed over time. So let's say a company normally has a PE ratio of uh, 15 and now it's at 10, then they might come to the conclusion that this stock is cheap uh, or cheaper than it normally is. So then it might encourage them to put a buy rating on the stock. Important thing to note though, is that PE ratios aren't really comparable uh, between different industries. So for example, if you took a firm in technology, it might have a PE ratio of 40 times, for example, whereas a PE ratio in car manufacturing might be 10 times. Uh, but that doesn't necessarily mean that the technology company is a more expensive and not a good buy. Uh, because the other part that PE ratio doesn't take into account is the growth of the company in the future. So it might be 40 times uh, current earnings, but if in the future the company is going to make, you know, twice as much of that, then the P ratio might be justified because the company is also growing a lot, which is why it's expensive. So that's something you take into account is you can't really compare between companies from different industries. John Sucker asks, doesn't YouTube pay better ad revenue? John Sucker asks, doesn't YouTube pay better ad revenue? John Sucker asks, doesn't YouTube pay better ad revenue on videos that are less than, well, that are over 10, never. Okay, I've got a case of the riches. Doesn't YouTube pay better ad revenue on videos that are more than 10 minutes? Why are you always out of time before that time mark? Yeah, but about uh, making money, yeah, we don't really make anything. I mean, we have our Patreon, but really the reason why I make the videos is just for educational reasons. I don't really, you know, I don't use this as a source of income. You know, maybe in the future if we make money, we'll make our videos 10 minutes. But for now, I only care about uh, you know, making good videos and, and the length doesn't really matter to me. I like to keep them short, but you know, it, it's whatever the editing process ends up leading to. I want to invest money, but I also want to be able to pull it back within a short period. How should I invest? Uh, when... Depending, your, your kind of timeline when it comes to investments is going to affect how much risk you can take on as an investor. Kind of a rule of thumb is that unless you're investing for over five years, you shouldn't have your money in the stock market. And that's again, because you can have recessions, you can have a, a market downturn. And if you need to pull your money out, then you're gonna be in a negative position. 
If you have something very short term, then you could just put your money in a savings account and then that way it's kind of, the balance won't fluctuate and you'll earn a bit of an interest. Obviously you're getting a lower return, but it's not really worth it to take on that extra market risk to try and make a bit of money. It's better to just take a safer route, put the money in a savings account, even a GIC that's a year long or whatever, uh, so that it's not gonna fluctuate. Why are bond prices falling? That again kind of relates to the rising interest rates. Everything's related to interest rates at the end of the day, apparently. Uh, so when interest rates rise, bond prices go down. The reason for that is that as interest rates increase, newer bonds will start paying the higher interest rate. What that means for current bonds or bonds that are already outstanding is that they will become less valuable. So a way to think of it is if you have one company uh, that gives out a loan that pays 4%, and then interest rates go up and now it gives out a loan that pays 6%. The 6% bond shouldn't sell for the same price as the 4% bond because it's, it's more valuable. It pays a higher interest rate. So that will decrease the value of the 4% bond because it's obviously not giving you as much money. Uh, so that's why there's an inverse relationship there. And that's all the questions we have. Thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions in the future, leave a comment down below. For The Plain Bagel, my name is Richard Coffin. Thank you so much for joining today.